Clear draw those and ranges for your life. Keep your um, your God conditioner working. I've uh, allowed myself an hour and a half to preach today. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about that yet. Um, <clears throat> we'll see when I get to about an hour and 15 minutes. If you all get up and leave, I know I've done the wrong thing. Um, turn to uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans has some really good stuff, and it's a kind of, when, when Pat said that this morning, I thought, I thought it's almost um, a prophecy in a sense where every time I sit down to get a talk together, <coughs> um, it seems of, of, over the last few years at least, that I keep going back and I keep revisiting this this idea that I have. and and. Um, as I do that, I end up with about 20 scriptures, and I know I can't use them all. And it's like a list, and it goes, it starts at the top, and I gradually fill the things down, and I put things in here and there, and, and something drops off the bottom. And, and uh, then while I'm giving the talk, I'll go through them to find out something that's fitting in with the, the, uh, the idea of what I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> and what I wanted to talk about today was more than just so you know, more than. So I've got more than I need here <laughs> right now. Uh, if you want me to go for an hour and a half, I'll have to use all of it, but that's not how it's going to work. It's amazing how it works. Romans chapter 8 and verse 34. It says, Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. No. There's a big no there. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So that's where the more than came from. Uh, more than conquerors is a, a phrase that is translated from one word in the Greek. And it's uh, uh, hypernikeo or hypernikeo, it depends on how they say it. Depends on either modern Greek or an old Greek or, or not a Greek at all. <coughs> and uh, But it means to be over and above victorious. It means to be victorious with leftovers. So it's more than. So we're more than victorious. Since you go back and you look at all these things, um, where in verse 35 it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation. Who's never had tribulation in their lives? No hands up. Okay, and you're still here. It's amazing, isn't it? So you've survived. And you've survived because you've got more than you need in your life. The power that we sang in the hymn, the power, the power. And what is, what's, terrible sometimes is that we talk to people about church and church is a, is a funny word it's not even it's not even a word that was used in the original language they didn't use the word church it comes it's an old English word and I think it's European in some respects but the Greek word ecclesia is it just means a group of people with a common interest <clears throat> and it was applied to political factions back in the day. And so there were all these political factions, as we know, back in the day, before the New Testament, and during and after. And there's always been political factions. And so we're, we could say um, our political factions here are ecclesias. 
So there's the Church of the Conservatives and the Church of the Liberals. If you wanted to apply an English word to them, we call them political parties. They're, they're not parties, they're far from being parties, believe me. Um, <coughs> parties are happy places, and normally should be. So we're, we're the faction that believes the truth, the truth with proof. But there's only one faction according to the Bible, there's only only one church or one ecclesia, it's the one that started on the day of Pentecost. And when that was begun, we know what happened, people received the Holy Spirit, they spoke in tongues, and we often talk to people about who we are and what we believe, and we tell people we believe the church should be the same today as it was in the beginning. <coughs> And I've gone through that with a number of people over the years and I'm always amazed when they agree with what I'm saying. And I tell them, so you know, all these other churches they don't belong to God at all. You might find individuals among them that are filled with the Spirit, but they don't really know what they've got. And they don't know how to use what they've got. So really they're operating under the less than. So they're not using everything that they can use. So they're actually getting less than what is available to them to be good Christians. They have a very poor vision because they don't understand to come out and be separate part of it. They have uh, uh, a lack of understanding and knowledge. They don't know how valuable it is, that what they have. Uh, and there's this tremendous value in being filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you don't value that, you've got a problem. Because it's the value of the Holy Spirit within you that will keep you in fellowship. It's valuing what you've got, but not just what you've got, but it's valuing who we are as a group of people uh, coming together, as like Sally said in her, in her uh, testimony, she was just amazed. You know, she thought when, when it was all over, people would go home, but they didn't. They said, well, what else you got to do? What more? What more? And, and so, really, Sally and Ryan had more than what they needed yesterday. And we are more than people. We are more than. We understand what we've got. We understand who we are. We understand the value of the fellowship. We're not the biggest church. We'll probably never be the biggest church in town or in the world, on the planet even. We'll never be the biggest church. But we're right. That's what's important. We need to understand how right we are. And it's not a, it's not a point of pride or a point of arrogance. It's a point of knowledge. It's a point of being somewhere that you know is right, it's correct, it's not some wild idea dreamt up in a, in a theological seminary or by a bunch of theologians about what's right and what's wrong and how they've interpreted or misinterpreted the Word of God. We know because the Holy Ghost teaches us all things that no man can teach. Praise the Lord for that. People have asked me, did you go to a Bible college? And no, praise the Lord, I didn't. I didn't go to a Bible college or a seminary or, or anything like that where I would have been totally destroyed in what I knew was right. I didn't have that inclination anyway uh, to be involved in that kind of thing. Uh, when I came to the Lord, it was like, I just wanted to soak up what the Word of God said. That was, that was the big... That was the big attraction. The Word of God came alive to me. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. I was getting more than I could absorb when I got filled with the Holy Spirit. Right there, right then, it was more than. And I just had to keep going back to it. It's like, like I said earlier, it's giving a talk. I can usually get more than I need. But what the Word of God is doing to me is teaching me, is giving me food while I get something together to present to you people. So I'm always getting more than I need to give a talk. 
but I'm not getting more than I need as I prepare it. I'm getting what I need and it is so important to get that. It's so important to, to have that, the ability to do that in front of us. And I'm one of those sorts of people, I can't sit down and read the Bible and uh, I read seven verses, I've got to go back and read it again because I read it too fast. And, and then uh, even after the second time I think, oh, what did I just read? I can't remember what I just read. I've got to have a goal, I've got to have, uh, I'm like a hunter in that sense, I've got to have a goal. And when I've got the goal, I can go through the Word of God and I can find the bits and pieces that fit the goal. And God leads me through this to, to get it all together. And, and I, I, if, if it was Sunday was tomorrow, I'd still be working on it. And I'd still be getting stuff out of it. It would be just so exciting for me. So it's, it's where you are. What are you doing? You know, are you getting more than? Or do you see in the Word of God, in the fellowship, being filled with the Spirit, there's more than you currently need in your life. That there's something there that you can go and turn it on and more comes out. And there it is. Wow, there's more there. I'm overflowing with information. I'm overflowing with joy. I'm overflowing with peace. I'm overflowing with, uh, with protection and provision and, and healing and, and so on and so on and so on. I'm overflowing with all this stuff. It may not all happen at the same time, but certainly as time passes, you see these things come to pass in your life. And so you, you read this, where Paul writes to the church at Rome, he said, what's going to separate you from Christ? Tribulation? No, no. Why? Because you're more than victorious. Will distress? No. Because God can give you more then you need to overcome your situation of distress. Is it going to be famine? No. God has promised to provide our every need. He's made that promise. And I'm sure all of us at some time or another have left promises undone. We know they're there, and yet you don't really push hard enough to grab hold of those wonderful promises that God has for us because he's got more than you need. He's got it all and he wants to give it to you. He's, he, you know, <clears throat> it says funny things about those sorts of things, breaking his legs to give you something and you're not taking it, you know. It just is so much he's got for you. We use strange terms to describe how we feel about certain situations and it is, it's amazing. It's like, oh, yes, he'd break a leg to give it to you. See? No, he wouldn't break a leg. But he really would. But it's an emphasis, isn't it? It emphasizes what God wants to do for us. He wants to give. God is a giver. And he wants to give us stuff. And we can go through life and we can think to ourselves, I'm not worthy. That's not true. It's no longer true. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's no longer true that you're not worthy. Because what God sees is Christ. He wouldn't turn around and say to Jesus, you're not worthy. He'd say, you're more than worthy. You're more than worthy. More than righteous. All the good stuff, you're more than all of that. We haven't even yet been able to scratch the surface of what God has for us. That's coming. It may not be all that far off, but it's coming. And we should be anticipating this coming. What is coming for us? When Jesus Christ returns, we'll be changed. And all the stuff that goes on in this world is just going to go away. It's just going to melt away. And we won't have to worry. We won't. We don't have to worry about it now, but we do. Uh, but we won't worry about it. It'll be something in the past. You just say, why would? It, why did I ever worry about that? How silly is that? How silly is it to just worry about that sort of thing? You know, I said, <clears throat> I've, I've learned over the years. I think it sort of frustrates my wife from time to time. She says, "What are you doing tomorrow?" I said, "I don't know. It's not tomorrow." 
asked me in the morning. So she asked me in the morning, what are you doing today? I said, I don't know, I haven't had breakfast yet. <laughs> so she wants to know whether she needs to make lunch for me and do stuff. And <clears throat> so I've got to figure it out. I've got to get ahead of it, be ahead of the game a bit. But, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting sometimes when I do that and see how God works the day out for me because I'm not making plans for myself, I'm waiting. I've got plans, usually I've got plans, but I'm not that, I'm not that done. I do have an idea of what I'm gonna do. But it it's just takes a bit of time to formulate some things in your mind and uh, to work it out, and to get moving. And uh, <clears throat> so, nakedness, peril, or sword, Sword, the law, the, the anger of this world, I guess, is that, I don't know what the word sword means there, maybe it's just literally a sword, wars, uh, rumors of wars, all that kind of thing. Are these things going to worry us? No. They're not going to, they should, they should not worry us. We should be the least worried people on the planet. We should not be worrying about anything at all. We shouldn't be. But we do. It's, it's in our nature, I think. Um, I think it must come from way back when God was dealing with Adam and Eve and uh, <clears throat> they'd done the wrong thing and they were hiding in the bushes. And they'd started to worry, hadn't they? They knew that they'd done the wrong thing and there they were hiding in the bushes and they're probably whispering to one another, I wonder what God's going to say about this. I wonder what he's going to say. They didn't have to wonder long. Where are you? What are you doing? Why are you hiding? That's worse. Why are we hiding? We've got to, we've got to confess to this now. We're hiding behind. Well, oh, this is, oh, what did you do? Oh, now we've got to tell him what we did. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it just is. We worry about stuff we don't need to worry about. And this, this whole thing of being more than, more than conquerors, we're hyper victors, hyper victorious. Doesn't mean you're hyper. Don't get hyper. Don't drink too much coffee. <clears throat> but that's how we've got to think of ourselves. We're more than victorious. Don't think three cups of coffee are going to make you more victorious. That's not true. First Peter chapter one, verse seven. One verse here. Just in the, the whole the whole idea is all about being more than here this morning. Verse here is that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes. Though it be tried with fire, it might be found unto praise and to honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So let's look at that that statement. There's a more than involved in there. So, your faith, the reason why you're here is because of your faith. Your faith in God's system, the way God works. It's your faith that keeps you here. If you lose your faith, you're very likely going to wander off and go somewhere else or do something, go nowhere, do nothing. I don't know how many people over the years that I've seen not come through here perhaps, maybe they have, I don't know, people have come and gone. And you hear later how their life went. You encounter them somewhere along the way. So how's it all going? Oh, well, it could be better. So they're actually telling you their life is less than. Less than what it should be. They're getting less than what God can give them. And what they've done is they've left for a reason that they should never have left for. Because they wanted more than. But it was a selfish more than. They wanted things to go their way, not God's way. And so they go away and hunt around go to this church, go to that church, they start the old church hop business and then before very long they go nowhere because they know they've left the more than house and they've tripped around the less than houses. 
and they're not getting what they need or what they want. They're actually getting what they need. They're being shown, it's being revealed to them that they're going to get less than what they need somewhere else. Here, you can get more than what you need. And you can be encouraged to take hold of all the promises of God that are yes and amen. Where you can get more than what you need. You can never have enough peace. You can never have enough joy. You can never have enough healing. You can never have enough provision. Or maybe you can, I don't know. I've never found that out yet. But you know, there's a lot of things you can never have enough of. And people go out into this world uh, a bit like Demas. He went off and Paul said, having loved this present world, we never hear of Demas again. He just goes and he's never heard of again. If Demas is there when the Lord comes back, we'll all rejoice. Say, well, wow, what happened? We never heard about you again. Your, your name never came up again. You don't want to have your name written in the book of life and then disappear and it never comes up again. You want it written there, solid. You want it to stay there. You don't want anybody to come along and look at the books and say, oh, what's happened here? This one's not around anymore. So, oh, okay, scratch that off. Don't get your name scratched off the book of life because you'll end up with less than what you expect. You want to be always focused Heading forward, looking for the more than. There's more. There's more to come. There's more to come. Tomorrow, there's more to come. This afternoon, there's more to come. Somebody's going to get up here and preach this afternoon. I don't know who it is, but somebody is. And they're going to give us more. We don't know what it's going to be like, but it might be just a little bit more that you need in your life. Oh, wow, that was terrific. I just needed that. Of course, God knew that. He knew that right away. This is what you needed. Stick around. You might just get what you need this afternoon. You may not get what you need this morning, but you're getting something, and you're probably getting more than what you expected. And if there you are, praise the Lord. So, your faith, that keeps you here. The trial of that faith is more precious than that of gold that has been tried in the fire. More than gold. Now, the interesting thing is there's no quantity mentioned there where he writes about the gold. So, more than gold. Maybe it's all the gold in the world. Your faith is more precious than all the gold in the world. More than. Now what would you do if you had all the gold in the world? You wouldn't be able to put it in your house, I know that. But if you had all of that, you'd say, wow, I'm rich. No, you're not rich because your faith is worth more than that. Your faith that got you through the trials in life is worth more than all the gold in the world. You think about that when you're going through a bad time. You say, okay, what can happen here? I can get through this. How? By the power of the Spirit that lives inside of me. I can get through this. Yes, I can get through this. I can get to the end of it all. And we look back. And think, well, that wasn't so bad, was it? We've got very short memories, haven't we? It's a bit like the ladies when they have children. After that first one, they say, I'm never doing that again. But you do, quite often. So, you know, guys, you just don't know how fortunate you are not having to go through that. <clears throat> it's a very painful process from what I've been told. <clears throat> so, but the, the end result is, is oh, so immediately, oh, look at this, you know, it's all forgotten. 
Look at this old and beautiful little baby. Oh, look at the cute. Uh, wow, look at that. I'd do that again for another result like that. Your faith is better than that. Much better than that. Worth more than that. Going through the trials and getting out the other end and looking at that and saying, my faith to get me through that trial is worth more than all the gold in the world. That's how valuable it is, not just to you, but to God as well. He sees that. I don't know what he does. I can only think of what I would do. Yes! 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 He did it! Ah! Great! She did it! Ah! Isn't that cool? I don't know whether God does that. God must have a sense of humour because we have. You should always hang on to your sense of humour. It's important. Proverbs 12, verse 26, don't turn this, short verse, it says, The righteous is more excellent than his neighbour. So, your next door neighbour, not filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm assuming, or doesn't know what he's got and she's got, if they are, we are more excellent than our neighbour. More excellent in God's sight. That's wonderful, isn't it? We are excellent people. If you look in the mirror in the morning, ah, picture of excellence. Mm, maybe not so much. First thing in the morning. Mm. Get up and look in the mirror and say, what's that? God looks on the inside, not the outside. Praise the Lord. So, more excellent. second half of that verse is, but the way of the wicked seduces them. So they get drawn into this less than life. The life that kills. They get drawn into that. It seduces them. It's a very seductive thing to get drawn into. The way of the wicked. And I said the way of the wicked seduces them. Their whole lifestyle seduces them. It pulls them back all the time. Until, who knows, at some point in their life, they may say, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm sure there's a number of us have felt like that. And the Lord said, okay, I'm going to knock on the door. Here I am. I don't want to do this anymore. Is there a way out? Yes, I've got the way out. Somebody comes and presents the gospel to you. And, and it's just... Wow, where, where has this been all my life? Well, you were being seduced by your lifestyle. You weren't interested in me. But now you are, because you don't want your lifestyle anymore. You don't want to be married to this lifestyle. You want to be married to me. You want to be married to a more than lifestyle, not a less than lifestyle. And so, come and be the bride. Come be the bride of Christ and live in the more than situation. Live in the more than family. Live where you can have all the things that you need in your life. I won't seduce you. You come because you love me. And I have more than enough love for everybody. That's why Jesus died. Because he had more than enough forgiveness and love and peace and joy and happiness for everybody. Willing to give to each and every one of us what he had. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled. There's no more room for anything else. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. First John 4, verse 4. You are of God, little children. That's a very powerful statement, isn't it? You are of God, little children. You have been born again. Your Father is God. 
So you've got everything that he has to offer, more than you can use. It's wonderful. And have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater than, more than. Greater is the spirit that's inside of us than he that is in the world. It's Satan. He's the, the ruler of the world. He's the seducer. He's the thief. He's the liar. And we've come away from that. We're no longer the thieves and the liars and the seducers. We're no longer a part of that anymore. We're part of truth with proof. We've got the words. The words don't get old. They don't wear out. They're always fresh. They're always available. They're always presented with joy. We witness to somebody, ah, oh, even if they say, no, get lost. Like they did pass the ward once downtown. Witnessing to some of the guys said, help, police, help, police. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's a memorable moment. <laughs> but when we start talking to somebody about the Lord, isn't it a refreshing thing? Isn't it just a, a joy to be able to present the word of God to somebody? And, and even if they just reject it outright, you come away from that feeling like, oh, that was so fantastic. I'm such a good witness. The other person doesn't think that at all. I say, go away, leave me alone. Uh, but you've done, you've done the Lord's work and how exciting that is. And how often it happens is, well, you know, the scriptures tell us there's people have the gift of evangelism. There are evangelists in the church. Others do not so much. Others, others do other things. But we all evangelize to some extent. Some more than others. More power to you those that do. But we all preach the word of God to someone at some point, somewhere along the way, and we all know the result of that. And the result is peace, and it's joy, and it's happiness, and it's a feeling of power. You've done something very powerful when you witness to somebody. We know that God said, my word doesn't go out void, doesn't return to me void. It accomplishes that which I please. So we preach the gospel, it will accomplish with God that which God pleases. Somebody's heard the gospel, they'll never be able to stand in front of God. I just hate to think of all the people that have heard the gospel in Fresno when the Lord returns and, and we all, you all, meet the Lord in the air. And we go through all this, this business of the thousand years and the season and then bingo, day of judgment, these people stand before God. And God says, you heard the gospel, what would you do? Nothing. Why? Oh, I didn't believe it. Well, boy, that's... You're going to get less than what you expect. And probably more than what you expect as well. It's going to be a, a two-way street there. They're not going to live forever with God. Another thing that we need to really keep in our minds, and be ever-present in our minds, that Jesus Christ is coming back. Whether we live or whether we die, Jesus Christ is coming back. And we're going to meet the Lord in the air. And when you meet the Lord in the air, I don't know whether he's going to go around to each person personally and say, well done, good and faithful servant. The very fact that you got there is a winner. The last person to get baptised and filled with the Holy Spirit before the Lord comes back they haven't had time to wander off and do the wrong thing. And yet, Jesus is going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. You're here. You got more than you expected, didn't you? You got baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, and bingo, there you were. Right with me. Straight away. That'd be exciting, wouldn't it? The rest of us, we could sort of hang around for a while and wait and see and do and, and uh, do stuff be involved in stuff but what are we seeing along the way as we move through life we're seeing things happen in our lives and we're seeing more than 
what we expected before we got filled with the Holy Spirit. I would say that without any fear of contradiction, all of us have seen more than what we expected out of life after being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's different. It's very, sometimes it's hard to remember how bad it was before we were filled with the Holy Spirit. Other people, when we get filled with the Holy Spirit, and we tell them what's happened to us, and they look at us like, yeah, right. They can't believe that we're telling them about this great change in our lives. And then you say, oh, we go to church three times a week. That's Go away, dear lost man. You know, surely not you, you who never went to church. I didn't go to church for 20 years. You who never went to church for 20 years, now you're going to church three times a week. You wouldn't do that. I said to my brother, uh, after we came to the Lord, we're sitting in the, the emergency entrance at a, at a hospital. And I said to him, oh, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I didn't think I'd change much. He looked went like that. What? You didn't change much. Don't be stupid. <laughs> he wasn't filled with the Spirit at that point. But it was, he said, you change so much. Sometimes we don't appreciate how much we actually change when we get filled with the Holy Spirit. We change more than we think. More than we understand. God does things in our lives to change us more than we expect or think. And other people see that part of our testimony. They see how we've changed. And even later in life, they still can't believe sometimes that, hey, you're still going to that church? Yes, three times a week. Really? Wow, that's amazing. Okay, must be something to it. Yes, there is. Yes, indeed there is more than you think. Did they do anything? No, they're happy with the less thans. But they don't know what true happiness is. They don't know how happy we can be. Even in our worst moments, probably, we're better off. We know we're better off than they could be in their best moments in life. Because all the things that they have are going to disappear. Ours are just going to get better. God's got more than we could ever hope or think coming for us. He can do more than we expect in our lives, now and in the future. We're going to live forever. We can't even conceive living forever in our minds. That's more than our minds can comprehend. But it's going to happen at some point in the future. John 10, verse 7. And contrary to what Pat might think, this is the last verse. <laughs> He's smiling. Then said Jesus unto them again, so he's obviously said these things before, but he's going to say it again. Verily, verily, amen, amen, or truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Now think about that statement there for a moment. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. In your life, Many of you probably went to church regularly. Some of us not so regularly. Maybe some of us not at all. But we all had our church that we were involved in, whether it was drugs and alcohol or whether it was uh, um, some other hobby that we got to so really involved in or whatever, you, whatever the big thing was in your life. And you were involved in that. And that was the liar. That was the thief. That was the destroyer, destroying your life. Filling your life up with fluff. 
and God wanted to bring some substance, some foundation into your life, and you had all this fluff going on in your life. This was your church, the church, the first church of fluff, and you were involved in that. And then comes along substance, and Jesus Christ opens the door, and you look through the door and go, wow, that's more than I ever thought it would have been. <clears throat> but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And some of the nicest things that can happen to a person are exactly that. They're things that kill, steal and destroy. They take you away from the real purpose of life. The real purpose in life for everybody on the planet is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the real purpose. That's why everybody's here. That's why God sent his son to die on the cross so that everybody could have the opportunity. God made provision for more than he knew would take advantage of the provision. He did more than necessary. Jesus Christ did more than necessary because he knew not everybody would take advantage of this wonderful promise. We have. We need to stop and think about just how privileged we really are. Because Jesus Christ did way more than was necessary to get us filled with the Holy Spirit. And so here we are today, being filled with the Spirit, rejoicing in the Lord, knowing that you know, we are able to tap into more than we can ever use. It's, God's got tons of stuff in reserve for us, and yet to come. I am come, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And really that's what it's all about, isn't it? This is what life is all about. Life is all about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Life is knowing that you have the opportunity to receive the promises of God that are yes and amen, and he's got more than you could ever use. Much more. We never want to forget that. We never want to lose sight of who we are and who we're related to and our connection. We have the Spirit of God living inside of us. We know that. It's not guesswork. You know, I don't get up here and say, oh, you're lovely people, you're all filled with the Holy Spirit. Nothing's happened to you. Not a thing. You never got baptised. You just said, well... Just accept Christ as your personal saviour. Liar, thief, destroyer. And people don't like that when you tell them that. But that's truth. And we have the proof that it's truth. Because this is the only way that it works. The church that began on the day of Pentecost when everybody was filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, is the same today as it was then. It is no different. The doctrine is no different. The doctrine is the same. The way of salvation is no different. It is the same. The result is the same. For the people on the day of Pentecost, when they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, God had more than everything available to them, just the same as he's got more than everything that we need in our lives today. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Two minutes.